Hey, do you want to make a podcast? Spotify's got a platform that lets you make one super easily, then distribute it everywhere and even earn money all in one place for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters and here's how it works. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or your computer. So no matter what your setup is like, you can start creating right now. Then you can distribute your podcast to Spotify and everywhere else podcasts are heard. Video podcasts are also available on Spotify. And when you want to take your conversation with your fans to the next level, Q&A and polls are the best way to get them talking. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, it's totally free with no catch. I've hosted my podcast on Spotify for Podcasters since day one, so I highly recommend you give it a try. Download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to www.spotify.com forward slash podcasters to get started today. As a parent, you know it's not just baby talk. Somebody's hungry. So talk with your baby's doctor about invasive pneumococcal disease, or IPD, and ask how Prevnar 20 pneumococcal 20-valent conjugate vaccine can help protect them. Children under 2 are at increased risk, but Prevnar 20 can help them develop more immunity to 20 strains of bacteria that cause IPD. Prevnar 20 is approved for children 6 weeks and older to help prevent infections from 20 strains of bacteria that cause invasive pneumococcal disease. Do not get Prevnar 20 if your child has had a severe allergic reaction to the vaccine or its ingredients. Those with weakened immune systems may have a lower response to the vaccine. Talk to your healthcare provider before vaccination if your baby was born prematurely. Side effects may include irritability, pain, redness, swelling at the injection site, drowsiness, muscle pain, decreased appetite, headache, and fever. For full prescribing information, please call 1-855-213-2138 or visit Prevnar20.com. <laughs> Ask about Prevnar 20 for your baby. Visit askforprevnar20.com. AT&T Connects, an ode to podcasts. Connect the alarm, change the podcast you stream. Connect the snooze, 10 more minutes to dream. Connect the shower, lather up with the news, sports talk, comedians, or movie reviews. Connect with that three-hour philosophy show. Change the drive into work and traffic so slow. Connect the dishes to voices that glow. Thank you to the geniuses of spoken audio. Connect the stories, change your perspective. Connecting changes everything. AT&T. At the time that I'm recording this episode, we have 57 days left in this year. Have you ever felt like time was slipping away, leaving your dreams just out of reach? Perhaps you've wondered if you're falling behind on life's timeline. Well, I'm here to tell you that this episode is a timely reminder for me and for you that you're not behind. In fact, you are exactly where you need to be. So knowing that, how do you want to spend these last 57 days of 2023? What is going on, beautiful people? You are listening to the Affirmations for Black Girls podcast, where we focus on personal growth and cultivating a healthy relationship with ourselves. I'm your host, Tyra the Creative, actress, content creator, and mental health enthusiast. Now, I've been saying this a lot lately, but that's because your girl been on Instagram a lot. But I recently saw a post on Instagram that said, God can still do a lot in two months. And it made me start realizing just how powerful prayer truly is. So today we're going to explore a powerful concept, praying boldly. It's time to break free from the limitations we place on ourselves and start praying boldly because we're not behind at all. And God wants to give us the desires of our hearts. So Before we dive a little bit deeper into that and why I wanted that to be the topic of today's episode, let's jump into our affirmation of the week. This week's affirmation is, I am not behind. I am exactly where I need to be. Let's go ahead and drop in. If you can close your eyes, let's close our eyes. 
and truly be present in the moment. I am not behind. I am exactly where I need to be. I am not behind. I am exactly where I need to be. I am not behind. I am exactly where I need to be. I am not behind. I am exactly where I need to be. I am not behind. I am exactly where I need to be. I am not behind. I am exactly where I need to be. Let's say it one last time together and really embody what it means to know that you are exactly where you need to be. I am not behind. I am exactly where I need to be to be. Y'all, I absolutely love this affirmation. And I think especially with the lifestyle that I live and living in Los Angeles and um, pursuing an acting career, this is something that is very pivotal for me to know as an actor. Because as an actor, You never really know when your career is going to take off, what direction it's going to go in. There is no straight path to being successful. Everyone's path can look a little different. And I have to remind myself on a daily basis that I'm not behind. Even though little Sally down the street um, accomplished her goals when she was 25, just because I'm 29 doesn't mean that I am behind. And... I feel like everyone can benefit from truly embodying this affirmation and downloading it into your long-term memory. Because especially with social media these days, it's very easy to feel like you are super behind. You know, we're always looking at people's highlight reels and comparing the 1% of their life that they show on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube to our own lives. And We're setting ourselves up for failure in this way because we don't know what they was doing right before they recorded this video. We don't know what they edited out of this video, but you are taking that little glimpse of their life and you are comparing it to you knowing 100% of what's going on in your own life. And that just simply ain't fair. The math ain't mathing. Now, this episode, I originally wanted it to be a Pep Talk Wednesday episode. And you guys, if you've been listening to the podcast for a while, you know that we have just implemented Pep Talk Wednesdays. Um, But life has been lifing and I did not upload one last week. And I do plan to upload a Pep Talk Wednesday this week. But the reason I decided to make it a full length episode is because if you have been listening to the Pep Talk Wednesday episodes, then you know that we don't include an affirmation. And I thought this affirmation was very important, especially with what we're talking about today. So the first thing that I want to touch on, because in this entire episode, you can tell about the title, God can do a lot in two months, y'all. We still have 57 days left in 2023. And it may seem like, oh, the clock is ticking down because we have less days in 2023 than we do. What am I trying to say? (laughs) Whatever. We have we have a little bit of days left. We have less of a year left than we have more of a year. Does that make sense? Y'all know what I mean. The year is almost over, but 57 days is a long time. It's a long time to ask God for what you want. It's a long time to get everything or not everything. It's a long time to just get in a mindset of um, ready to receive and ready to ask God for what you want. So the first thing I want to touch on is 
divine timing. Timing is everything. And just because it hasn't happened yet, doesn't mean it won't. It don't mean that it won't happen tomorrow. It don't mean it won't happen next week. It doesn't mean it won't happen in these last 57 days of 2023. It doesn't mean that it will happen in these last 57 days of 2023. But the concept of divine timing is that everything happens as it should, when it should. Now, when I was growing up, and listen, I'm still growing up. I am a child adult, okay? I'm 29 years old. I'm still a child, right? I'm nine in adult years, okay? Still a child. So when I was growing up in in um, high school, college, and oh, my phone is not on silent. Okay. When I was growing up, I used to get obsessed with my timeline. And, you know, being Southern, you want to get married, you want to have kids, you want to have a house by 25. I'm four years past that. And when I started to come up on the 25 year mark, I started to get very anxious, worried, and I started to feel like God didn't want me to have those things. And I'm here to tell you right now that just because you don't get things on your own timing doesn't mean that it isn't timed divinely. God has the final say. And once I realized that the reason I don't have what I want is for a bigger reason than outside of God doesn't want me to have it, I started to appreciate it more. I'm going to tell you a, a story. I don't remember where I saw this or what happened, but um, or like how it came about. But one day I was driving and I was late for, I don't know where I was going. This was like a few years ago. I was late for where I was going. Maybe I was going to an audition or to work or somewhere. And the traffic in front of me, in my, from my perspective, was driving all crazy. They was driving slow. They was holding me up. It had two people. It was a two lane road and the cars in front of me were just driving side by side. I was annoyed. I couldn't get around them. I couldn't um, get to where I was going fast enough. And as I was sitting there steaming, infuriated, upset, feeling out of time, we passed by a super bad accident. The smoke was still coming from the cars. There was only a car pulled over to the side to help. The uh, first responders hadn't got there yet. So that means that that accident had just happened. And what I took from this is timing is everything. God can see things that you simply cannot see. And once you believe that and once you embrace that, you start to develop a gratitude around not having things because you don't know what he is protecting you from. You don't know what may have been in that path that could harm you, that could take your life, that could send you down a different path spiraling, a path that you weren't supposed to be down. So timing is everything. And just because it hasn't happened yet, it does not mean that it won't. And there is a reason and a season and a lesson and why you do not have the thing that you want at this moment. So for us, it is our job to continue growing ourselves, continue cultivating ourselves, and continue doing what we're doing to be the best version of ourselves while we in preparation of receiving those blessings that God has for us. This portion of the episode is sponsored by AG1. At this point, y'all, we've been talking about AG1 for almost a year, and I cannot tell you enough about how AG1 has enhanced my daily routine. One thing my friends are constantly getting on me about is whether or not I'm eating enough, which is directly related to me getting enough vitamins and nutrients on a daily basis. Here's the thing. I love AG1 and I have been taking it since last year because it gives me peace of mind. 
no matter what I eat throughout the day. AG1 replaces your multivitamin, probiotic, and it does it all in one simple drinkable habit. It's filled with over 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food source ingredients that keep my gut healthy, increases my mood, and most important to me, gives me peace of mind. I know that as long as I take AG1, I'm covered nutritionally no matter what goes on throughout the day. I take AG1 after my workouts. You guys know I'm a boxing girly and I need my nutrients. I have one scoop, put it in some water, I shake it and I drink it. The number one reason I love AG1 is because it's easy and it takes the mental guesswork out of making sure you're putting your health first. After all, this is the Affirmations for Black Girls podcast and we aim to be healthy inside and out. So if you want to take ownership of your health as well, try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash affirmations. That's drinkag1.com slash affirmations. So check it out and I've also linked it down below in the show notes. Now let's get back into the episode. Praying boldly, bold prayers. Now I will be honest, my prayer, and I've talked about this before on a podcast, I am, let me start here. I am terrified to pray in front of people. I'm getting better at it. Um, And I, what I've been doing is whenever I'm saying grace at a restaurant, I will offer to say grace. Um, I think for me, what I'm struggling with is, I don't know, sounding competent when I pray, like saying the right things, not flubbing my words. You know what I'm saying? Especially since I'm an actress, I'm used to having lines ready to go. I'm used to having them memorized. I'm supposed to be a great speaker and all of these things. I'm supposed to be able to enunciate and project my voice and just deliver uh, lines beautifully. And it ain't always like that when you pray. Now we've talked about, or we've talked about this in church a lot and in my head, I'm like, okay, I really want to build my prayer life. I want to be the, you know, the best prayer, um, giver, the, the best like prayer person I can possibly be. And sometimes I get a little self-conscious about the way that I pray. But one thing that my pastor Ture said, and I go to, um, one church LA in, here in Los Angeles. And one thing that he said one time, I can't remember when he said it, or I would link the sermon down below, but the same way that the Bible says, come as you are to church, come as you are in prayer, right? The, the thing that gets me to pray and pray boldly these days is realizing that this is just a conversation between me and God, nobody else. There are no rules around prayer you can like the your prayer life can look different than my prayer life um than the person down the street's prayer life than your mom's prayer life you have to find what works for you the key to praying boldly is pray as if you believe that he cares pray as if you believe that god cares about everything that is coming out of your mouth and the way that it made sense for me was thinking about God as one of my parents. When I am asking my parents for something for Christmas, I am asking them in belief that they will get it for me. So what's stopping me from treating God the same way and having that same feeling on the inside of me when I'm praying boldly for things that I want? And especially in this day and age, we can really set ourselves back because we're like, oh, I may not get that. That's too far fetched. We may be in our head about what we're praying for, but it's like, listen, you have to pray boldly and you have to pray fearlessly. and You have to believe that God is listening to you. You have to pray in a way where it's like, God loves me and he wants the best for me. And this is what I got. And this is what I'm about to give to him. This is what I'm about to say to him. Now, this, this whole episode isn't just about, um, the way in which you pray, but I have linked down below a resource uh, website. It's about how to pray boldly. And there were a few that I want to touch on, but there's more in the, in the website. So the link is down below in the show notes. So click that if you want to do 
a bigger deep dive if you are looking to pray more boldly. But pray as if you believe that he hears you. Because a lot of times, it's, just think about it like this. Some people, sometimes people don't talk because they don't think you listening, right? And that could be magnified times 10 in your prayer life because God is not physically there, like in a body that we can see, right? We have to feel his presence, but pray as if you believe that he hears you. Like, oh yeah, God, I know you hear me. I know you listening to me. This is what I got for you. Pray as if you believe that he cares what you have to say, because we can get into a mode where it's like, why am I saying anything? Don't nobody care about what I'm saying. God cares about everything that come out your mouth, especially if you are um, cultivating your relationship with him. What? So ask for those bold things. What are the things deep down inside of you that you want to ask God for, that you want to talk to God about? You don't even have to ask him for anything. But what are those things that you want to pray boldly about and fearlessly about? And another thing that Ture said, my pastor, that really stuck with me when I was um, really diving deeper into understanding prayer life is that Building your relationship with God is just like building your relationship with me, with your boyfriend, with your girlfriend, husband, wife, mom, dad, brothers, all of that. It's all the same. And what happens when you don't put time and effort into a relationship? What happens when the communication fades? What happens when you are not giving the relationship quality time? It starts to fade. So once I realized, wow, like, I need to treat my prayer life and I need to treat my relationship with God the same way I do all of my worldly, physical bodied relationships like friends, family. It started to just restructure my mind in a way that I pray and the way that I talk to God in a way that I grow my relationship with him. So you want to pray as if he hears you. You want to pray as if um, you believe that he cares for you and you want to pray for this. this is, these are the ways to pray more boldly, pray for miracles. You literally never know how God is going to bless you. You never know what could be the miracle. So pray for those miracles, pray in a way where you believe that God has your best interest at heart. And also, which is, this is the last one I'm going to touch on, but it's honestly a big one because it encompasses really the first two as well. The praying is if you believe that he hears and believing that he cares, you have to pray through the fear. Fear can look a lot of different ways. Fear can look like anger. Fear can look like frustration. Fear can look like solitude or suppression. Fear can look like fear. It can look like anxiety. It can look like worry. It can look a lot of different ways. Pray through all of that. And what I do now, because I'm still, I'm not perfect, y'all. I'm growing my prayer life and I'm learning to pray more boldly and get out of my head when it comes to, oh, I'm not going to ask God for that. or Oh, I'm not going to talk to God about that. First of all, God know everything already. But the act of you sharing vulnerably what's going on inside of you is going to take y'all's relationship to the next level, right? So when I am scared about something, I say that because my prayer is just me calling God up on the phone and us talking in the way that our relationship is built. So that looks different for everyone. So I'll be like, God, I'm so terrified right now. I'm worried. I'm doubtful, but I lay all of that at the altar to you. And then I go into my prayer. I acknowledge everything that I'm feeling. I know that God hears me. I know that God cares for me. And I say, God is there. You release all your burdens onto the Lord. So God is there to take all of those burdens off you. So I say, I release all of this. I lay it at the altar. I put my burden down at the altar. And then I get into what I am, um, what I'm asking him for or what I want to talk to God about. Because every prayer isn't, every bold prayer, prayer in general, whatever, doesn't necessarily have an ask in it. Sometimes you're praying 
in a way where it's like you're praising God, you're thanking him for the miracles that he has already uh, blessed you with. Sometimes you just want to share with God what you're feeling. Sometimes you're doing more of a meditative prayer where you're just getting everything inside of your head all aligned and really reflecting on what's going on, taking inventory. But praying boldly in these last 57 days of 2023 You never know how much magic, how much miracles God can work in your life if you just pray boldly, even if we only have 57 days left in the year. So I have a challenge for you guys. I saw another post on Instagram that said, all November, write down everything you want, pray over it, and then go out to get it. And I really liked this because, especially as someone who is growing in their prayer life and still trying to find the words to say sometimes, writing things down and praying over it can definitely be a great introductory thing to help you become more of a bold prayer, can help you become more comfortable with praying for the things that you want, can help you become more comfortable with asking God for what what you want. So my challenge to you is to write down everything you want for the last 57 days of the year. So for me, I only have a couple of things that I really want to focus on. And one is to continue taking my health seriously. Um, As you guys know, Athletic Greens is the sponsor of this episode, but I am at a point in my life. I'm almost 30 years old now. I need to take my health seriously. I need to take care of my body because you only get one. Your body is your instrument. It's your temple. It's the only place that you have to live for 100% of your life. So for me, it's very important to start taking it seriously. And that's why I take AG1 to take all of my vitamins and, and minerals that get that on a daily basis to make sure that all my bells and whistles are working properly. But even more than that, I just signed up for TIA, which is, or I just signed up for TIA. It's T-I-A. It is a whole body wellness, um, like doctor group. I don't even know the, the correct words. This is not, you know, sponsored by them or anything, but I just had my first appointment with them and I had an amazing experience. It has completely changed the way I view going to the doctor. Going to the doctor for me felt like a chore. It felt like, oh gosh, I'm a little scared. What's wrong with me? You only go in something wrong. But I went for my annual exam and I got everything done. I got blood work. I got um, a pap smear. I got a full physical. They took, um, I did allergy testing. They got my weight, my height, all of that stuff. And it just, the way that Tia welcomes you in and feels so comfortable it really changed the way I look at going to the doctor. So I want to continue down that path. Um, I linked it down below for you guys. I don't know how many um, locations they have, but definitely take a take a look at it. It's all women doctors and nurses, and it really made me feel heard. It made me feel cared for, and it encouraged me to want to continue going on a regular basis and taking my health seriously. I also have a dentist appointment um, next week. I went to the eye doctor earlier this year. This is the time to really take my health seriously. Like I think that's the real luxury when we're taking our health seriously. So that's definitely something that I am praying over. I'm praying over whole body health. I am praying over just the idea that my health is something that I should, that should be a priority in my life. And the next thing that I really want through the rest of 2023 is to spend quality time with my family. So I'll be home um, for the holidays, well, for Christmas and New Year's. And I'm really taking that extra time to utilize that time at home the best way possible, making it quality time versus just being at home and around people, because that's typically how it ends up being. So the prayers that I'm praying for 
when it comes to spending quality time with my family and continue to take my health seriously is are things like, God, I just pray that I am excited about taking care of my body. I pray that my joints and my blood and everything are at its optimal level as far as praying, as far as spending quality time with family. Lord God, I just pray for divine protection over my family. I pray for um, great experiences. I pray for enriching memories with my grandparents and my mom. Lord God, I just thank you in general for their presence in my life and still having all of these people that care about me so much. Things like that are what I'm, I'm specifically praying for when it comes for these two things. But my challenge to you And I want y'all to do this. And that's also the open-ended question for this episode. So if you're listening on Spotify, please write at least two things that you want for the end of the year in the open-ended question. Because I look at them all. I would love to know what you guys are believing God for um, for the last 57 days of the year. Hey, y'all. Tyra here. And I'm super excited to share that. 2024 is going to be a game-changing year for the Affirmations for Black Girls family. I am claiming it in the name of Jesus. Y'all, we're cooking up some incredible plans and we want your input. So in the show notes of this episode, you'll find a link to a brief survey to gather your thoughts. Why, you ask? Well, we're gearing up, let me tell y'all. We're gearing up for exciting events, and we'd like to know if you'd like to join us. Whether you're in Los Angeles, where we're based or not, we're looking to create special experiences that you can be a part of. Plus, here's the exciting part for y'all. By taking this survey by November 30th, 2023, you'll be entered for a chance to win a $25 Amazon gift card as our way of saying thank you for your valuable time and insights. But the survey will not close. You can always take the survey. We are always, always, always welcoming your feedback and your opinions and your insights. But if you are ready to be a part of our future, please click the survey link down below in the show notes. And thank you guys in advance for rocking with me and sharing your insights for the Affirmations with Black Girls podcast. Your journey is uniquely yours, and divine timing is always on your side. We may not be able to see how it's on our side at all times, but rest in the fact that it is. You know, they always say that hindsight is 2020. Now, as we navigate the last 57 days of this year, I encourage you to pray boldly like no one is listening except God. He will meet you where you are. Approach the end of this year with a fearless spirit and unwavering determination. Keep believing in yourself, ask for what you want, pray boldly, and continue to affirm your beautiful and unique journey. Uh Uh-oh, y'all, you already know what time it is. It is time for our fun closing segment. And today I'm introducing a, well, not introducing, but we're doing a segment that I've been wanting to do for a long time for the first time. So if you've been listening to the podcast for a while, then you know sometimes I'll ask for questions from listeners. And you guys, I have some questions that I'm gonna answer today. We're gonna do two. So if you want to ask anything that your heart desires, click the link down below in the show notes it says ask a question and leave us a question you can also um, include an audio that I will play over the podcast and we can answer it that way but yes I love hearing from you guys I love questions from you guys the emails everything is so great so let's just jump right in we got two questions for today the first question is from Shapri where can I start on this self journey any good books or tips where can you start? Honestly, the the place that I started would definitely be self-help books. Um, a great book that I read from cover to cover is The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F. And I say that that's a great book because it really puts into perspective the societal pressures that we have as 
um, people. And I think that in the age of social media, it's getting a lot worse. The societal pressures are getting a lot worse because everyone is living in this digital age, content, 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 put as much out as you can. And you're seeing so many different things. You're seeing people go viral. You're seeing people blow up and that can have a negative effect on your mental health. So I do recommend that book. Um, Right now, I'm also reading Set Boundaries, Find Peace by Nedra Tawab. I think that's how you pronounce her name. And there's also a workbook. And I think that's a great book as well. There are there are a few books. Um, it really depends on what portion of your self-help journey you want to focus on first. For me, I started out focusing on healthier relationships because I was in a toxic relationship at the time when I decided to dive in and really get to know myself. So I did read a book called The Man God Has For You, which definitely helped me just feel out what I wanted in a relationship, what a relationship should be like. And then I also read Relationships Goals by Pastor Michael Todd. And it was a great book. I read that with a little book club and it it also had a work a workbook Y'all going to figure out that I am big into workbooks. Now, while I'm on that note, because some of y'all may be like, um, girl, when are you supposed to have a book club this year? Y'all, life has been life in. As we continue on this podcast journey, I will continue to open up and unravel about things that um, go on in my life. But I'm human just like y'all. And I do want to start reading more. If you guys did read the books on the book list, let me know. Send me an email. Tell me how you like them. Should we continue the book list for next year with the same books? Should I change it up? Let me know what y'all think. But that's where I think you should start if you wanted books. Um, but if you wanted to do other things, I also suggest meditation. I love the Calm app. It's linked down below in the show notes always. Um, I think you get like a seven day free trial by using my link. I use Calm for meditation. I started using it uh, for the sleep stories. They have a lot of bedtime stories that are amazing that help calm my mind and send me to sleep. Um, I grew up having night terrors. So those sleep stories really helped me to calm my mind. And when I listen to those, I don't have any. We can dive dive into that later, but um, I definitely recommend an app like Calm, and I also recommend therapy. Starting out with therapy, I started out with BetterHelp. It is also linked down below. It's a virtual platform where you get to pick your therapist. You get to have groupinars about different um, mental health aspects. I took one on childhood trauma. I've taken one on self-care. I've taken one on PTSD to better understand my dad's life because he was diagnosed with PTSD. He was in the military when I was young. So I, I really loved better help because I was able to jump in, see what I wanted to focus on that way and then go from there. So that's what I would say. Thank you for your question, Shapri. Okay. Question number two, um, Fahar, Fajar, Fahar, sorry if I'm pronouncing it incorrectly, asks, what are your morning and nighttime routines for physical and spiritual self-care? Oh, this is a fully loaded question. Okay, I'm going to keep it a book. Right now, my routines are crazy. They've been crazy since July. Um, I spoke about it briefly, but I did lose my great grandmother at the beginning of July and I was moving around a lot. And I really want to create routines that can sustain me bopping around, moving around, flying from uh, state to state. But the truth of the matter is your routines have to be fluid. So in a perfect world and what I've written down in my journals, my morning routine looks a little bit like this. So physical and spiritual, I'm going to put it all into one because I I keep it all in one. But morning routines, I'm in the gym at 7 a.m., which means I wake up at about 6.30 and I just take that time to get ready and I play um, lo-fi music, music with instrumental, no words, to wake myself up and start energizing myself and then I go to the gym. Once I leave the gym, I immediately put on my gospel playlist. I have a couple of different gospel playlists. It really depends on how I'm feeling that day. Like if I'm feeling more like a 
old school uh, Kojic church vibes or like Southern Baptist vibes? Or am I feeling more of just, I just want to chill. I want to vibe with Jesus and listen to like Corn Hawthorne or all of the newer artists. Um, it depends on that, but I choose a playlist. I take a shower, um, do all of my skincare routine. And then I sit down and I journal. I may make me some tea or if I'm really hungry, I'll go ahead and cook breakfast while the music is playing. And then I'll journal and pray and just worship with God. I typically give myself an hour for that. And by that time, it's time for me to start getting ready for my work day. I work until about mm, six o'clock. And then I like to do one activity after that. Um, which would be like, maybe I need, or not activity, but like chore kind of around the house. Maybe I need to load the dishwasher. Maybe I need to water my plants. Um, If I don't have anything like that going on, or it's something that I can split my time, I'll call my parents. I'll call a friend that I need to call back. I'll multitask and then eat dinner. It's time to go to bed. My nighttime routine looks about the same. If I didn't get to journal in the morning, because, you know, things get hectic. I do work from home. Um, Sometimes I have a lot of meetings during the day, or sometimes I do wake up late. If I didn't have time to journal in the morning, I will journal at night. And I have a book by my bed. The book don't be getting read, but the goal is for the book to be getting read, right? So I have a book by my bed, and I want to read at least five pages a day. And then last thing I do before I get into bed is pray. So I say my prayers, I ask God for what I want to ask him for, or I say whatever, um, and I just thank him for keeping me safe throughout the day, all of the things. Throughout the day, I will say, I pray multiple times. Sometimes I just feel the urge to pray, and I'll go ahead and do it. And sometimes um, I only end up praying for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and then again, once I once I go to bed. But the biggest prayer that I saw like heavily impacting my day was right after my previous, my my ex, my last boyfriend and I broke up. I just prayed every morning, God, keep my mind for today. Just get me through this day. And that really elevated my prayer life because that prayer was coming from a place of, um, I wasn't not hurt, but I was feeling hurt. And it was coming from a place of God, like, I need you. I need to lay this burden on you. Same way we talked about earlier, I need to lay this on you um, and just get me through today. So that really helped take my um, prayer life to the next level. But yeah, that's basically my routine. I do not like a super intricate routine because for me, it's easy for me to fall out of that. So I keep it as simple as possible. It's like, wake up, I have a playlist ready to go, so I don't have to even think about it. Um, I also use my Alexas to set routines. So they're either set by a saying, like I might say like, Alexa, good morning, or Alexa, good night. And I'm saying it low because I don't know if y'all Alexas is listening. But I will say those things and I have a certain routine set up. Um, and she'll walk me through the day or sometimes they are set up for a certain time. Like she'll tell me, Hey, it's time to eat because I'm horrible about eating lunch at a decent time. So those are my morning and night routines. I try to keep them very simple so that I can continue to follow them. But thank you so much for your question, Fahar. Fajar, Fahar. Thank you. All right, you guys, that is all that we have for you today. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. I'm actually so glad that I made it into a full length episode versus a pep talk Wednesday. I think that was honestly, that was God because I didn't expect to go into detail about as much as I did. I didn't expect to talk about praying boldly as much as I did, but the spirit just led me there. So thank you so much for listening. And I really want y'all to remember like, God can do a lot in two months. God can do a lot in a week. God can do a lot in a day. God can do a lot, period. Okay? And just rest in that sentiment. So thank you guys so much for listening. Make sure that you subscribe to the podcast because it makes a huge difference. Make sure that y'all buy the AG1. Try the AG1. Get the five travel packs. Get the uh, the vitamin drops. They're so good. AG1 is great. Supporting me through 
the AG1 and everything else that's going on really helps me keep this podcast going. So please, and thank you in advance, make sure that you leave us a review. I read them all. The reviews on Apple are a lot better than the ones on Spotify. So if you're listening on Spotify, I need y'all to run those reviews up, okay? And make sure you follow us on Instagram at Affirmations for Black Girls, on Threads at Affirmations for Black Girls, on YouTube at Affirmations for Black Girls, and on Twitter or X at AFBG underscore podcast. Thank you guys so much for listening. And I cannot wait to talk to you guys again soon. This is Affirmations for Black Girls. So y'all know I am all about self-care. One of my favorite self-care activities is meditation. I've been using a meditation and sleep app called Calm that I think you guys would really like. I mean, I've talked about it on the podcast a few times and I personally love the sleep stories. They're the perfect way to wind down and drift off to sleep after a long day. And to be honest, I recommend the ones that are actually for kids the most because they have the fun voices, music, and sound effects. I want to help you experience the joy meditation brings to my life. So I'm giving you a seven day free trial of the app. Head to the link in the show notes to check out the Calm app and prepare to be more calm on a daily basis.